K. And the fourth one is Asira, uh, Santosh. And the fifth one is Pirulab, Jim. Sixth one is Ecorex, uh, Gregory. Seventh one is uh, Excel Robotics, Alexandra. Eighth one is Didi Medtech, Takashi. So today we have our eight uh, startups. And uh, we have uh, uh, approximately 20 judges. I don't see everyone uh, here yet, but it will be recorded and uh, all judges will watch, watch it again. And uh, I appreciate all judges came here on time, actually before me, <laughs> even a different time zone. So let's begin. So welcome to Unicorn events. And uh, we are part of the largest Unicorn battle and a uh, Unicorn Cup in the world. My name is Crazy John, <laughs> John Kojo Moribaka. I'm today's uh, host. And uh, I'm representing Silicon Valley Ventures and uh, founders and the CEO. We are advisory firm for venture capitals. It's very special firm, especially in Japan. We don't see anybody doing that. And we are also supporting entrepreneurs at the same time, so as investors. And also venture partner of R3i Ventures from Luxembourg and uh, representing startup Grind Fukuoka and Nagoya. I brought it to Japan from Silicon Valley. And I love this uh, Unicorn Cup um, around the world where we can meet investors and a startup same time. So very, very welcome. I'm so pleased to have all of you today. So before we're gonna start our great eight startups pitching, uh, let's welcome uh, judges one minute introduction. So let's start from Peter. Um, hello, everyone uh, from Singapore. Uh, R2I Ventures, we generally focus on the startups that are in the deep tech and medtech. Uh, size of a check really depends on the opportunity. And I'm really looking forward to you to pitch. We also do in a lot of events with respect to female founders like uh, She Loves Tech. So have to see any any startups that are led by female founders and good luck to everyone thank you thank you so much peter i see peter all the time in all of these <laughs> unicorn battles and a great colleague of mine actually we haven't met on in person yet but we always meet online all right next uh great judge from nepal Bashdev, please introduce yourself and your check um, size and your interest Good afternoon from Nepal. I am Basudev Adhikari. I have 30 years experience in central banking in regulated and supervisory area. And I engage few years in commercial banks board. And currently I'm independent director of one uh, private equity, uh, private equity. Uh, yeah, I'm encouraging uh, the entrepreneurs, uh, entrepreneurs to do best. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming, Bashdev. Okay, who is next? Um, Barad, please introduce yourself. Welcome to Unicorn Battle. Hey, thanks, John. It's uh, wonderful to meet you and also others. Uh, many familiar faces here, some new faces as well. So first I would like to say that um, I'm a serial entrepreneur myself, built companies, exited it, and now you know helping others to succeed. So I run an accelerator program out of Bangalore in India. It's a global accelerator. Uh, we have uh, in-house as many as um, four funds from early stage, say ticket size of 100K, going all the way up to 3 million US dollars. And uh, we also have an open innovation platform that we've been running with UC Berkeley for the last uh, 15 years. Uh, that's another big program which all these startups that are pitching today could leverage. So let the best team win and best wishes. John, I'm looking forward to meeting you next week. Yes, Barad is coming to Japan. So we should have our unicorn pitches uh, night nighttime meetup. Or maybe, yeah, uh, sure. actually, I'll be in Shibuya on 13th, like a Tuesday, at uh, Shibuya's very famous co-working space. Maybe you guys are welcome to join us. And the uh, 13 sport is we're going to have our NFT summit in Tokyo. So you guys are welcome to join us. So please have a safe trip to Japan, Barat. Okay, Thank of you. course, Judge, uh, who is coming? Helen, uh, could you introduce yourself? Welcome. 
Um, hello, everyone. I'm Helen Yang, and I'm in China, Beijing. Um, uh, I have been working in healthcare um, industry for many years, and uh, especially on uh, um, private equity investment and venture capital uh, investment. Um, and uh, now I, I, I also started my own company um, as a service company for venture capital and private equity. So I know um, the difficulty and the dilemma and the uh, dreams of the startups and uh, I, I know how to uh, help them to get fundraising. Thank you all. Thank you so much, Helen. Okay, next, uh, please welcome our great judge, Tobias. Yeah, absolutely. I hope you can hear me. Um, yes. I'm calling us Singapore at the moment. Uh, we run Blockchain Founders Fund. We are early stage VC Web3. I've done uh, 110 or something investments in the space now. I still active deploying. We just closed a new fund. So I'm excited about this uh, opportunity to learn more about the startups and uh, you know, hopefully considering many of them for investment. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much, Tobias. Okay, next judge, uh, please welcome Gajo. Greetings to everyone from sunny Belgrade. Um, first of all, John, I would like to thank you for your trust. And I must admit uh, that I was looking forward to today's event with excitement since this is the third time that I'm officially meeting the Japanese startup ecosystem. Furthermore, it is always a pleasure to be at any of your events, especially considering the importance of the topic the exceptional speakers and, and the expert uh, event judges. Knowing you and having seen your previous events, I can freely say that I'm pleasantly surprised and excited considering the potential of the startup startups from this event. You know, the quality of the startup itself, according to my free estimates, is really solid. And I sincerely hope that there will be a tough fight for only one Highlander startup who will get the opportunity to go to the regional unicorn battle competition. As far as my uh, background is concerned, I'm a senior finance executive with more than 17 years of experience in financial management and administration, including many years in senior analytics and business transformation roles in a corporate setting, as well as operations management between startups, SME, and SMB organization. Additionally, I have extensive experience in developing and managing technology and manufacturing companies and a proven track record of success in creating and executing operational plans that improve efficiency and profitability, followed by an expertise in financial and operational performance analysis, optimization and management of international tax credits, as well as proven experience in establishing uh, and opening foreign subsidiaries and branches. I have worked in a variety of industries, including fast moving consumer goods, financial services and technology across Southeast and Eastern Europe. Most importantly, both for startup participants and their founders from this event, I'm here in the capacity of a business consultant and representative of two, and representative of two multifamily offices and an investment fund from Southeast Europe uh, that mainly invests in deep tech, health tech, financial technology, and industry agnostic startups. So regarding my previous experience as an election judge, I was among the semifinals eight member jury of the best technology innovation 2020 competition in Serbia. And I'm a regular member of the jury and global election judge for Startup Network. As far as this competition is concerned, dear founders, note that there can be only one. Uh, jokes aside, I'm looking forward to the clash of selected startups, and I apologize if I offended someone with a quote from the cult movie Highlander. Thank you for the opportunity. Good luck to everyone, everyone, and may the best win. Thank you so much, Gajor. All right, who's next? Uh, Wales, uh, are you there? Wait. Oh, you are in the car and uh, looking great in the suits. Please welcome. Uh, sorry, you are in the muted. Uh, this is Walid Al-Bashir, I'm from Dubai. I'm the managing partner of Intuitive Ventures. And um, uh, we're looking forward to see the uh, startup in the Japanese uh, uh, ecosystem uh, today. Um, looking forward to, uh, to, uh, to be here. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Walid. And uh, you look great in the car. <laughs> okay. So who is next? The uh, great judge, Arash. Please welcome. Hi, everyone. I'm 
Farash Rezai, uh, original descent of Iran. Uh, now we have officers all around the world in Dubai, in London, in New York, in Cape Town, pretty much uh, positioning ourselves to have a presence in all four corners of the world. We, our background originally is being involved in fund of funds and deploying capital to smaller funds so that they could catch early stage innovation and technology. And with our expansion pretty much into the technology space where we've now rolled out our own partnerships with Visa, where we do our own black cards, as well as we have our own app in the market and things like that, we're pretty much looking for innovation innovation across any spectrum across any industry as long as your main priority is evolving humanity you've got our support great thank you so much arash okay Pleasure. next uh niar niar johar am i pronouncing okay <laughs> please welcome Hey, you're pronouncing it perfectly. My name is Nir okay. I'm, <laughs> I'm the CEO of Bangladesh Angels. Uh, glad to be here. Also involved with a few kind of regional uh, programs and platforms to get funding into early stage entrepreneurs, but glad to listen in and looking forward to hearing the pitches. Good luck, everyone. All right. Thank you so much. Okay, next, uh, Borkar, please welcome. Hi everyone, it's Volker. I'm based in Taiwan. I'm actually getting ready for a trip to Germany where I'm originally from. I um, co-founded Mosaic Venture Lab, which is focused on the automotive industry. And um, we are in Taiwan, Continental and Audi's um, official partner. And uh, we work with startups um, in the mobility ecosystem. Thank you. Thank you, Volker. All right, uh, Serukak, please welcome. Hi, John. Thank you for the invitation. I am a partner of the Dutch-based venture capital company. We are focused on tech-wise general uh, startups, more uh, uh, cybersecurity, gaming, or uh, AI uh, categories. Um, good luck for everyone. Thank you. So. Thank you so much, Serak. And uh, next, Isru, are you there? Hi, John. Hi, <laughs> great to see you. Where great are you now? You um, my home, Tokyo. Oh, okay. Welcome back. Sure. Good. This is my first time. Thanks for accepting. So, uh, hi guys. Um, I'm um, working as a corporate innovation consultant. Um, and currently I'm working on developing another company small startup uh, to help uh, countries mainly in, in Asia. Uh, so I started with Sri Lanka introducing um, tea and uh, some of the like very um, hidden uh, stuff like uh, have you heard of like Kitu tree, Kitu trickle? So um, there are only like 70,000 trees in Sri Lanka. Uh, so I'm trying to introduce that in, in Japan uh, to like, uh, in Japan, we have like 100 years old companies. They are, they are lack of innovation, but they don't want to change anything. They, they're trying to uh, protect the, the culture, the, the aspect of the being ancient companies, that kind of thing. So without disturbing that, I'm trying to help them to innovate by introducing uh, these kind of like valuable things from Asia. So uh, hopefully uh, I will learn a lot from you guys and uh, I might be able to share some stuff from my experience. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, Isur. And uh, our next judge is, I think the last judge, uh, Gara, please introduce yourself. Hello everyone, this is Gaurav. I'm the managing partner at Arit Ventures. Hello to all the fellow judges. Good to see you all. And I look forward to listening from all wonderful startups. Hi, Gayo. Thank you. Okay, great. So I'm not missing everyone. Everyone introduce yourself, all judges. 
It's great to have all judges from around the world. We have more judges than startups. John, I did so, not I did not introduce myself, but if you have 15 seconds, I could do it really Oh, fast. please, please. Okay, we have uh, 30 seconds. Oh, okay, great. So, oh, sorry, hi, Savrata, please welcome. Yeah, thank you. So hi everyone, this is Subrata Patra, managing partner at Idea Capital Ventures. We are a venture capital firm based out of Bangalore. We are primarily focused on four sectors, metaverse, health tech, climate tech, and, and deep tech in general, right? And 20% of the deals that we do are outside of these four sectors. So very happy to be here today. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much. Namaste. So everyone, before we're going to start exciting pitches from eight startups, please show me your great smile. And let's take a picture before our fight. Please show, show us your be most beautiful smile, everyone, <laughs> like when you are a baby. Smile, everyone. <laughs> all right, let's take a picture. Every, I need all smileys. Bolker, Carbon Tribe, please show me your face. We are waiting for all of you. Volker, Carbon Tribe, show us your smile. Great, great. Okay, Volker, please. Okay, he's busy. All right, everyone smile. One, two, three, cheers. All right, great. So now we're gonna start uh, Unicorn Pitches in mm. Japan. So let's start from Hello Lab, Dwayne Gretsch. Please welcome, Dwayne. Hi, everybody. Thank you very much. My name is Dwayne Grek. I am the CEO of Hello X Lab. What's our relationship with our spaces? I don't mean the stars above us. I'm talking about the rooms that we go in and out of. How do they impact us? How do we use them? Where do they take us to? These are fundamental questions to understand our connections to our spaces. And they are not just places that we go to, rather they're offering opportunities to enrich our life. And that becomes very important during COVID when we lost our connection to our spaces, which means we lost our sense of exploration, relaxation, freedom, and inspiration. Now, along the way, I was thinking, how can we rethink our spaces of the future? Taking creative cues from some of my more famous uh, sci-fi uh, titles, spaces were looked at as generative and immersive environments to teach, to heal, and to entertain. We thought we can do that. We need our spaces to be immersive. So we did it. We built Immersive Space. Immersive Space is a turnkey platform that enables real-time world building. We're using tech uh, that's off the shelf. We're working with the creative community and we're building interactive personalized experiences in specially designed immersive rooms. We're building the tools for our creative community and our world builders with partnerships from the tech communities at large. And we're engaging the creative community to be our advocates. These are our independent artists all the way out to production studios. And we're helping businesses lower the entry barrier for immersive experiences. So you can expect that in all the public spaces that you're used to. Now, the market right now could not be better for immersive experiences. While our current uh, competitors are focused on their key segments, we've built a very flexible platform that allows for a personalized um, interactive experience, a marketplace for the creative community, and a scalable service, which layers us on top to be the world builder for all sectors. Now, here's some of what we're concepting towards our MVP. These are scalable experiences you can find anywhere, anytime. Seeking out uh, B2B uh, end users, we're licensing our platform, which allows them to access our tech, our library, and our supports for their needs. Now, our team of experts bring over a decade in their respective fields. From myself in the immersive environments, my co-founder, who is a multi-time exited founder, and our technical director who has spent years building amusement park experiences. Pretty great, right? Now we're about to release our demo concept in Osaka early next year. And over the next couple of years, we're just going to expand our team, 
our platform and our partnerships. And this is where you, the judges come in. We're seeking partnerships in content creation, hardware vendors and business development. And of course, in the future, investments for our MVP. And if you're excited about the immersive environment as we are, together, let's make our spaces immersive. If you wanna know more, I'm happy to talk to you after my presentation. Thank you very much. Excellent, excellent. Thank you so much, Dwayne. And uh, that was a great pitch. Excellent. All right, so Thank you. we have a three minutes Q&A session. So, okay, let's start from Gajo, please. Just Thank one you. question. Th Thank you, John. Dwayne, uh, I must say that I agree with John that your presentation is flawless. You were right uh, on uh, within the three minutes. And as far as that, you have the highest grade considering your pitching. Uh, as far <laughs> as your business model, I'm trying to understand your pitching. Uh, um, uh, I mean, your business model. Can you tell us a bit about, you know, how you're planning to earn uh uh, through your business model. I mean, can you explain that a, a bit in more details? I mean, yeah, absolutely. Sure. Th thank you very you much for me? your comments and your question. Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay. Okay. Just, just, just a little. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I okay. hear. I have so, some problem with uh, with cutting. Okay. No problem. Yeah. So we're looking to introduce a variable licensing plan. So. Reaching out to B2B markets, working with hotels, airports, uh, lounges, um, office, offices, and universities, uh, we're looking at trying to explore what, what's our annual price for our content and our tech access. Um, they're going to be, we're going to be working with a hardwood vendor to help build the spaces for them at an additional cost there. So that's something we, are, we want to explore more with, with our partners to kind of get the right uh, value for that. But we feel that licensing the technology is going to be our best means of attracting the B2B markets for sure. Thank you for the, for, uh, for the answer. And can you elaborate more how your purchase credits are uh, working generally? I mean, uh, what I see uh, within your summary is that they're like working in blocks of 10 to 100 minutes. So how does it work? Yeah, so that's something that we were looking at from the 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 B two C level is you know basically like uh, gaming credits. So we can do we can offer like a game pass, or we can offer time that they can use anytime, anywhere. Something that you can sort of shareable, like a Amazon gift card of sorts. So think of it as tokens to go and engage um, at their own free will, uh, as opposed to forcing them into a monthly subscription that they may not need there, but. We give those options for those who just want to have free and unfeathered access. All right, time is up. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Dwayne. Thank you. All right, next startup, uh, Tokyo Factory. Please welcome Minoru. So we uh, have a three minutes pitch time and three minutes Q&A. All right. Thank you very much. Yes, good evening. Uh, my name is Minoru Ike, the CEO of Tokyo Factory. Today, I would like to introduce our SaaS for manufacturing industries. So first of all, please allow me to briefly uh, introduce myself. So after I graduated Osaka University, I started to work at Kawasaki Heavy Industry Manufacturing Site as an engineer. And after working at VCG, I founded Tokyo Factory at 2020. Uh, I have been involved in the manufacturing industry for a long time throughout my career. And during that time, I noticed that the degeneration of production site in heavy industry is still legacy. Uh, Proceed Cloud builds a database of production information based on photographs that have not been effectively used at the production site. So I Ah, excuse me, I will start to the, my product demo. So just a moment, please. So I change the screen. So also many photos are taken at the manufacturing site like that. So there is a time lag between the shooting and the saving. So they are not shared and uh, most mostly managed locally on the PC like this. So I will change that screen. So, so this is uh, the Proceed Cloud project screen. 
So a major feature of this system is that the photos are arranged in frame that shown the parts on the vertical axis and the uh, process on the horizontal axis. So this is the main feature of the Proceed Cloud. So by organizing your photos in frame like this, you can save a lot of time to searching for photos. So also we offer mobile apps, so just on trees. So this is a Proceed Cloud mobile application. So you can take a picture from the disk buttons and you can choose the two information from the uh, these two buttons. And uh, after I shoot the photos, it is smoothly uploaded. And after that, the, this photo is plotted to this screen. So you can understand the process. So if the uh, production site is in the overseas, so you can understand the pro uh, process of the this the project. So I will back to the. So currently, the Proceed Cloud is used by a wide range of the customers, from the major uh, global plant engineering companies to the small factories. So it is used in 10 countries around the world via Japan companies expanding overseas. So our vision is creating a world standard manufacturing SaaS. So that's all. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you for listening. Thank you so much. You are on time, Minoru. All right. Any questions, much. judges? Okay, Isur, please ask only one question. Yeah. Uh, Minoru san, uh, thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, I, I would like to know uh, uh, what is your business model again? Uh, how how they pay you and what is your uh, kind of plan to uh, for the next step? Oh, thank you very much. So our customer is already paid money for the Proceed Cloud to usage, uh, use. And uh, so, so they paid money for the mm. uh, cost effective to use the Proceed Cloud to reduce the workload and uh, to create the database to keep the quality level. Yes, it's okay. So, makes sense. Or... Thank you, Isu. So, so uh, yeah. Ah, thank you. All right, thanks, Isu. Uh, thank Gala, please ask question. I'm trying to understand what is the value proposition you creating you are creating here, right? I mean, um, database for manufacturing and and that is okay. But this is also something that any other company's IT or tech team can replicate, right? What is what is your innovation and barrier to entry over here? Uh, thank you very much. So we have the patent at the Japan and the United States of the, this uh, GUI of the Proceed Cloud. The, this is the first body uh, proportion of the, our company. But uh, the, if after the, we make the uh, huge customers, so it will become uh, another uh, body proportion. Oh, thank you very much. Thank yes. you. Okay, we, we have one more minute for the question. Isu, you have one more question? Sure. Um, so uh, um, I was hoping to get uh, more detail about the next step or next stage of oh, your yeah. company. Um, I've seen like different companies doing the same thing and they ended up like cloud service providers. Do you have some kind of um, idea to improve your business into that area or? Oh, thank you very much. So our next plan is in the domestic market. So we want to go the enterprise companies to expand to the enterprise company to get much upper and the uh, so next plan is uh, ah, in the overseas plans, we want to uh, make our customer at the, the overseas to gain the money from the overseas company. All Does right, thank you. Time is up. All right, thank you, Minarsa and uh, judges. All right, we're gonna go for next startup, uh, Carbon Tribe. Uh, please welcome Keichiro. Hi. 
Okay, um, you can start. Right. Yeah, right. Um, can you see the screen now? Yes. Yeah, right. Okay. Um, yes, um, hi. Uh, my name is Kei Yano, and I'm co-founder of Carbon Tribe. And, um, oh, oh, sorry. I'm trying. And our vision is uh, creating an economy to solve urban CO2 emissions with the participation of global city citizens. And here's a founder team. I'm a business guy, ex Google, ex Salesforce, resides in Berlin, Germany. And I have 15 years of B2B tech enterprise experience and also Web3 entrepreneur since 2017. Uh, we have received the NIA Foundation grant this year and an MBA from iBusiness School. And co-founder Yuki is an AI big data machine learning specialist combined with mobility and blockchain. And he resides in Berlin and Amsterdam. And what we want to solve is the CO2 emission generated in the global cities, uh, which 70% of them are produced. And the voluntary carbon market is expanding, uh, expecting to grow uh, up to 2.4 trillion USD by 2027. And what we deliver as a solution is the impact to earn by choosing better mobility and calculating how much CO2 uh, reduced uh, by choosing better route and mobility, mint NFT for the amount reduced and verify through third party authenticator like Vera. So the N NFT certificate will be issued for the carbon offset to the enterprise. Instead, our citizens uh, receive tokens as a reward. Users just choose a, a most eco-friendly way from uh, point A to B, and simply anyone can make a contribution by on-chain verification, earn and stake eco-citizen tokens without double count issues. So um, eco-citizen token will be uh, automatically issued by the third party, uh, no, also, um, authorized by the third party uh, institutions such as Vera in the future, and to become officially tradable in the voluntary carbon market later. And the enterprise who need to offset their carbon emissions to reach ESG goals can purchase our official certificate on the marketplace. And the most services on the market are either DeFi approach or ethical impact approach. And our model aims to bring business impact by making mass adoption for user side and B2B approach for client side. Our business model is uh, taking 10% margin of selling prices of NFT certificate. And we are going to launch our product on NIA protocol combined uh, Google Maps APIs because NIA is one of the most technologically advanced loved uh, de by developers. And as a go-to-market strategy, we start making cases in Europe and uh, expand to Japan and Asia, then global. And Japan is our home country and has a massive potential for the future. Okay, time is up. Market. Thank yeah. you so much for your great pitch. Okay. Judges, any questions? Arash, please ask your question. Please, Ar Arash, uh, you're muted. The founder, I missed your name. What was your name? Uh, I'm Kay. The founder of I'm Kay. Yeah. Kay. Hi. Have you have you heard of the Stripe Climate uh, Contribution Program that they've got with Stripe? Have you heard of the company Stripe? Ah, uh, yeah, of course. The the yeah yeah finance company, right? The payment company. The financial company where they do yeah. the payment portals. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah I want course. you to do I want you to do some research into the Stripe climate contribution. Uh -huh. And what happens with them is they actually pretty much assist companies such as yourself, uh -huh. where they the payment partners will uh -huh. be able to give from their revenue stream towards um, carbon removal programs yeah. such as yourself. So yeah. I just want you to do some research on the Stripe climate contribution program that uh -huh. they've got running uh -huh. and reach out to Stripe and see mm -hmm. how you could possibly become one of their partners. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. what that would assist you is that then would be able to fast track your revenue stream through mm -hmm. partnering with a company such as Stripe. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. you can break away into working on your series B and your series C and such mm -hmm. and so forth. So I mm. just wanted to give you some advice. Look into mm -hmm. the Stripe uh, Climate mm -hmm. Contribution Program. Oh, great. Thank you for the advice. Uh, maybe I will contact them.
Yeah. Thank you, Arash. Pleasure. Judges, pre Pleasure. please ask, uh, give them advice in the different uh, meetings and ask uh, questions. Oh, Warid, please ask your question. Uh, yeah, thank you for the presentation. This is really interesting. I see we've seen a lot of startups in Europe and uh, in other parts of the world. They're trying to tackle this problem because, mm -hmm. as you know, um, transport is responsible for 20% of the green gas emission globally. Mm -hmm. But again, uh, how are you seeing other lead management, you know, route optimization and other players in the market? Would you mm -hmm. be able to plug and play or you have to take this right from uh, the ground through your technology? And the other part of the question will be, is that uh, if you're getting them in the play, how would you avoid double uh, minting of these mm -hmm. tokens, uh, like mm -hmm. the carbon credit? Yeah, yeah, right. So first of all, about the double meeting, I think uh, like uh, that's the reason why we uh, chose NIA and the blockchain technology. So um, as you know, like uh, logging to the service, we of course use uh, like uh, uh, connect to the wallet and the wallet is completely uh, connected to the individual and uh, there should be no like double counting. And also that token that means it is uh, also recorded on the blockchain. So there should be no like a double count uh, record or double counted NFT uh, on the market. And that's the first, uh, uh, that's a, a, the first answer. And the second one um, was, um, uh, 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 so, sorry, uh, what was that again? The other question? It's, it's related to the first one. Uh, because mm, yes, see, yes, you're right. you are, mm. sorry, you are taking sorry, it from ground Sorry up, guys, you'll be uh, able... time's up. Uh, uh, please uh, contact uh, each other. Thank you right. so much for your you. wonderful right. pitch, Kay. Thank you. Thank you. You're from Germany today? Yeah, I'm from Germany, yeah. Excellent. What, what time is it now? Uh, it's uh, like uh, 11.30 now. AM? Yeah, uh, AM, yes. Okay, okay. All right. Great. Mm. So enjoy the lunch after you, your result. Okay, yeah, cool, so thanks. our uh, next fourth startup, Asira. Uh, please welcome Santosh. Yes, give me a second. I'll just share my slide. Okay. One minute. Uh, and the judges, please uh, vote all startups. Okay. Okay. One second. Are you able to see my yes. slide? Yeah, we can see you that you are slide. Okay, give me a second. Good evening, everyone. This is Santosh from Azila. So our founding philosophy, end of the day, our goal is very simple. We want everyone to be safe and secure. So imagine sorry, yourself. I, I, sorry, I, sorry to interrupt. I cannot see your slide now. You cannot is see everybody slide? seeing? Yeah. Can you see? Yourself? No. Is it only me? Or oh Peter, thanks. You cannot see my Another slide. people can see his slides. Can you see my slides? No. 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 Can you move the next one, please? Mm -hmm. How yeah. about the next slide? What, what I see is the black screen with a Japanese letter yeah. and not even more than yeah, that. Same. Oh, just give me a second. Not even okay. now. Now we can see. Oh, you got uh, it. That's it. And just put it in full screen mode. Okay. Okay. I'll do that. Okay. Could I just start over? I'm sorry. One minute. Okay. Okay. Take your time. Okay. <laughs> okay. Re relax. It's okay. <laughs> okay. We can do it again. Okay. Are you ready? Yes, I am. You You want to make it bigger? Bigger? Okay. Full screen? Just give, a, just give me a second. Like a slideshow. show. Yeah, you so last time I had this slideshow, the whole thing is not showing. Okay, do, do it again. Okay, one minute. Oh, no. It, then no. Go back. Sorry. You can go back. Hmm. Can you make it bigger? Yeah, I'm just trying that one. Uh, now? Okay, good, good. Okay, let's okay. start. Three minutes. Okay. okay. Give me a second. Hello, everyone. This is Santosh from Azila. So our founding philosophy is very simple. We want everyone to be safe and secure. So imagine a security guard looking at all these screens. Is he able to keep everyone safe? 
I don't think so. With the time commitments and the passion commitment, I don't think that's possible. That is why Azila comes in hand. So while we look at the security industry in Japan, it's important to note that most of the security guard workers are 45% over or 60 year, old, 60 year old or older. And ratio of the dark knowledge that is going into security is 98%. So in fact, the security cameras are not really using to making people to like uh, recognize um, terror or accident, but it's more used for recording, which is a problem. That is why our AI security service can detect abnormal behavior automation. It can be used for any existing uh, ca security cameras with a simple edge AI server, and it can also be used for video management. So as you can see, it combines both the pose estimation and time series analysis to detect abnormal behaviors. Whereas our technology has three standard points, anomaly detection, MCT, and line crossing detection. It can give unique IDs to people which are going across the framework. It can also detect behaviors which are deviant. And as you can see, this is some screenshot of our demo, which can see fighting, falling, staying. And also our AI system can, uh, can resemble the anomalies within this. Whereas MCT can also give ID to each human beings to give a distinguished framework. Our technology is one of the best compared to all the other technologies. And our security camera, there's around like 6 million yen in Japan. Whereas our business model is using $40 per each subscription model on a monthly basis, where our marketing opposition tends to be within this framework, which is much better than our, which is much better than others because it can recognize more situational awarenesses compared to other companies. Whereas when it comes to our clients, these are our main clients, our football stadium, shopping mall, office buildings, which are all of the top companies in Japan. And this is one case study where Anola was used to detect abnormal behaviors at the Majia Gion Stadium, because across the stadium, it would be all trees and it would be hard for the security guard to distinguish anyone from it. That is why we use our AI technology and this is our vibrant leadership team coming from Vietnam and Japan with full-fledged AI expertise. And we hope to create a sustainable and a Thank safe future so for much. everyone. Time is Thank up. You. Thank you so much for a great pitch. So any questions, judges? I will yes. leave it up first to Arash and uh, if he has raised hands because I have seen that he did it before. But if okay. not, my, my question uh, would concern your traction, since I haven't seen that you have mentioned anything uh, about it during your presentation. Thank you, Garage. So traction meaning like our the money raised, like the vol the volume, you know, the current activity, and of course revenue. You can also mention. Okay, okay, no problem. Yeah. So to be very honest with you, we are uh, we are uh, so we accomplished Series A, which is zero point seven million dollars, and now we're attaining Series B, which is three point nine million dollars USD, and our total revenue would be four point five six million dollars, and. I hope you can understand. So within this company, we mostly focused in sales in Japan, but uh, but we want to expand the sales in a much more at a global perspective. But I, but I, but I have a small digression. You said will be. I'm interested. In, you know, what is your current revenue? Your actual uh, uh, figures compared to your forecast. So can you just elaborate yeah. on that with more yeah. uh, so to be more precise? So right now our uh, current forecast is four point uh, four point five six million dollars. That is our current revenue, and we hope to uh, bring it to around uh, 10, ten to twenty uh, million dollars within the next two to three years. However, this comes this comes to various parameters because right now we are focusing mostly on Japan. But one of the main reasons for coming to this pitch event was to collaborate and globalize our company which can cross beyond borders, not using this technology just in Japan, but also maybe in Latin America or India, because currently, uh, aside from our leadership team, everyone in our company who are engineers are from IIT trained. So our next step in order to reach that traction would be um, opening up a base in India and to attain the following. 
are you already moved with such connections in terms of your uh, uh, JTM, your go-to-market strategy? Are you working on uh, connections uh, and how are you plan to uh, to uh, launch your product to uh, to the aforementioned markets? Thank you so much for your intriguing question. So we had already established um, effective collaboration with the IIT's Indian Institute of Technologies because. Um, because I think over there, there were uh, several incubation centers, which would be enabling us to set up our branches over there. So we had already established with certain universities in India. So that is our current stage. But I think the current challenge is that we need to comprehend the current market trends in India. And in order to do that, we should be also uh, comprehending the culture and the market behind it. So that's why we have our marketing team, which is still researching in that regard, but we had, in regards to the initial steps, we had already established a strong and secure collaborations within the technological aspects in India. Thank you very much for the, for, for the answer. And I will leave it up to Arash to ask his question. Yes. Sorry, so what is your monthly recurring revenue right now? Uh, monthly? Um, I think uh, monthly would be, um, um, so you're asking our monthly revenue, right, sir? Yeah. Yeah, but sir, um, that is very um, dependent on the right. time, the time month. is up. Th thank you, Asir. Guy, uh, thank Guy you, Peter. Guy, you covered my questions as well. It, he just generally, the founder generally needs to work out what is his revenue stream on a monthly basis and how he's going yeah. to expand into different markets with different demographics. Of course. Thanks, Guy. You uh, covered it all. Yeah. Thank you, guys. The time is up. All right, next. Uh, please welcome Pew Lab. Please welcome Jim Han. Jim, are you here? Um, actually, um, me, Alyssa, is going to pitch today on behalf sure. of Jim. Okay. okay. So let me share the screen. Can you guys see the screen? Yes. Okay, perfect. Let All me right. start. Are you ready? Hi. Okay, let's start. Yes. Yep. Hi, my name is Alyssa Mashida, and I'm a business manager at PLab. PLab is a Japanese B2B green tech startup providing a one-stop plant-based leather sourcing and manufacturing solution. So here's what we do. So rising temperatures, rising sea levels, extinction, natural disasters, spread of infectious diseases. The global issues we're experiencing right now are the effects of climate change, and it's our turn to stop it. 80% of the consumers today prefer to know the processes that go behind the product they purchase, and many of them are willing to pay up more to ensure that their products are sustainably produced. One of the biggest contributors to these issues is the leather industry with a market size of $400 billion. 80% of the animals collected in the industry are wasted yearly, and 83 billion gallons of water is consumed in manufacturing. This denotes that the leather can causes the most damage to the environment amongst all the fashion materials. Adding on the effects of manufacturing processes of leather leads to an increased risk of cancer for the leather tannery workers. This is where Peel Lab comes in to reduce food waste, prevent animal cruelty and carbon emissions. Hence, we produce plant-based leather from fruit and vegetable scraps such as coconuts and pineapple leaves. Our plant-based leather is not only an alternative to animal-based leather products, but they also have many advantages to conventional leather. While traditional leather uses 107 gram kilograms of carbon emissions, our leather uses only four kilograms. Another amazing feature of our leather is its lightness, plus it's robust, waterproof, scratch resistant, and maintains its original texture even after years of use. Therefore, the sustainability of our leather is also innovative in the um, longevity, longevity of the product use. We currently offer pineapple leather for custom designs such as coat bags, wallets, and Nando City, which is the most common leather backpack used by elementary schoolers in Japan. We also produce bamboo yoga mats. Our customers currently include um, a furniture maker, Modern Form in Thailand, and Demano, a Japanese lifestyle brand. And we are also partnering up with a few of the largest Japanese automobile club companies and major sports brands. Well, our goal is to take over and replace at least 1% of the global animal and synthetic leather industry with plant-based leather by 2030. 
we dedicate ourselves to um, several SDGs, especially for climate action, life below water, and life on land. Well, yeah, thank you so much for your time and listening to this presentation. I hope I made it on time. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, 12, 12 more seconds. And uh, that was really, really great uh, pitch. Thank you. Okay, so thank first you. question from yeah. uh, Hempal. Uh, yep. Hi, <clears throat> hi Alicia. Yes. Hello. Yeah, uh, thank you. Interesting Thanks presentation. For... Yeah. So uh, just wanted to know more about the financial and uh, how, how this, uh, the cost wise as well as the volume wise, how are you doing? So can you just give us a little bit brief on that? Okay, so, well, okay, I can't really come up with like a monthly revenue because we just started like this year, like this February, but our um, revenue, like what we raised, of, um, yeah, what, how much, so we, we've been selling about um, 60K, so a $60,000 worth of leather so far to our partner companies or clients. And, yeah, um, we're about to sell um, more than like $100,000 next year mm -hmm. because um, we're partnering up with like the largest automobile company in Japan. Yeah, so apart from that, you uh, know, the, co co the comparative cost of production uh, for this uh, plant-based weather and the, like you have told about the environment and other aspects. So just wanted to know what exactly the cost uh, uh, burden would be on this when you move on to plant-based weather. Uh, thank you. Um, well, I sh I'll note that down and I'll come back to you later uh, with the um, specific numbers. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to um, just make sure with our CEO about that. So yeah, I'll come back to you later. Yep. Okay, thank, you. thank you. All right. Thank you for the question. Okay. Next is a Peter. Please ask. Yeah. Um, thanks for the presentation. Um, I just have a simple question. Um, I'm working with a Japanese company that is doing the exact same thing, but they use an Apple uh, mm -hmm. product. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if you ever heard of Upcycle, Yuka Shigeno. Uh -huh. So um, if, I've heard of them. Okay, so if you want me to connect you, I'll, I'll certainly do that. Thank you, okay. that'd be great. Yep, thank okay. you very much. Just follow up and okay, okay. guys. Guys, thanks for the advice or support, but please ask the question. <laughs> okay, <laughs> next. Thank you very Vashdev. much. Vashdev, please. Okay, thank you for uh, its noble idea. It's very uh, interesting as well. Uh, can you explain about your quality product um, uh, and quality control? Quality? How you, yeah. I see. So um, our quality of the product is a uh, very, so um, I'd say it's very robust. And so like it, it's robust enough to be um, used for car seats, which um, they usually have a very, very high standards in order to um, be used as a car seat because you have to, um, the leather has to um, be like durable through like heat and like cold and like water. And it has to be waterproof and like it has to like meet all the very like extremely high standards, but we met all of them and we're ready to um, launch these like new car seats with the top, um, one of the top ja like Japanese automobile manufacturing companies. So that's all I can really explain right now. <laughs> thank you. Yep, thank you. Okay, great. Time's up. Thank you so much for your great pitch. So who's next? Thank you very much. Uh, Echoix, uh, please welcome Gregory. Oh, um, let me just share my screen. Um, okay, yeah, y you guys okay. can see now, right? Are you ready? Yes, yes, let's start. Hello, I'm, I'm Greg and I'm the co-founder of EchoX and EchoX Business is a Web3 business management platform for uh, um, not just large corporate but also small business. Um, as we can see from last year that uh, NFT, Web3, these are the, definitely the buzzword and a lot of brands in various industries, they are all entering Web3. But why, why, why are they doing that or why have they been doing that? Because they saw the value of this, um, this trend because the new generation of users are, are entering Web3. And 
um, these are the, the the brands that are using our platforms in Taiwan and in, in Asia so far, including Yahoo Taiwan and Dentsu and the biggest um, car manufacturer, Luxion, in Taiwan. So um, looking back in 2010, uh, all the brands they are creating, they were creating um, applications in, in cell phones as well. Uh, why? Because they saw the opportunity of bonus um, of mobile device. And now it's the same pattern as they are all moving into the Web3 um, um, trend because, the, because they also saw the um, opportunity bonus of Web3. So what is our platform um, doing is that we can help uh, a brand or an enterprise to issue NFT in all um, terms of uh, issues and also to create a utility through our licensing platform. So from issue to create utility and then to a long-term web free management, um, uh, member management. And an NFT can be used as a VIP tickets or a gaming um, certificate or even online offline um, event pass. And that really can be all, all be done on our platform. And some showcases of ours, uh, we are the Yahoo Taiwan Spark 3 partners and over 10,000 NFTs utilities are using our platforms for the users. And then to Taiwan as well, uh, we are the, the technical support for them to create uh, not just NFT Web3 planning, but also a um, full front and backstage of utility platform for all the users. And Foxfront is, is the largest um, uh, car manufacturer in Taiwan. And we also help them to uh, come up with one NFT per every pre-order of car in their very first um, uh, electronic car, uh, which were all sold in sold out in one day. And eventually, they will combine this NFT with their digital um, car certificate. And this is another uh, quite exclusive showcase that we combine NFT with a ex um, exclusive uh, Michelin star cuisine and a priority reservation to this uh, Michelin star restaurant in Taiwan as well, and which created around 20,000 USD month per monthly for this uh, particular restaurant. So uh, our platform is a, a full uh, front stage and backstage for the client. So they can just uh, flexibly set any uh, rules of utilities for any NFTs. And on the front stage, users can just uh, verify their NFT possession and then they can just redeem any utilities on this platform. And if you just Google Echoes in Taiwan, and it's quite, we build a lot of- uh, Okay, time is up. Here. Thank you so much okay. for the great pitch. Thank you. Uh, great to see you again here. All right, any questions? Uh, Tobias, please. Yeah, thank you so much. First of all, uh, congrats on the, on the success and thanks for your time pitching. I'd thank love you. to understand a little bit more in terms of the vision for the company, right? I mean, I get that right now it's very focused on supporting companies, launching NFTs and getting into the Web3 space. But is that yes. sort of the, the main part of the business or where do you see this going also in terms of thinking that it might become a lot easier to launch NFTs, right? Or like uh, what sort of the value add moving forward in terms of uh, not just reducing frictions? Um, yes, thank you. Uh, in, in around mid this year, we are already looking at the long-term um, usage of NFTs as a uh, web free member pass. So from then we starting to build this um, system and to try to create and build this long term management platform for all the brands with their uh, original members. So they can just um, transfer their original members through NFT and into and start to create their web three uh, uh, member management. Because we think that um, through digital wallet, you can understand more of your uh, customer persona and in order to, to, to increase your bound with your users. Uh, to increase the the output rate, the conversion rate in in general, and it will increase the total revenue for each um, client, and that's the the long term um, value of Web three of NFT that we are trying. We have been trying to to uh, to provide to our customers. So, so in short, it's basically customer insights, right, which are being repackaged. And exactly, exactly a Web three CRM, if you put it that way. Got it. Got it. And um, the platform, how is it being monetized right now? It's it's basically a, a, a percentage of the minting fee or how, how would that work? I didn't fully catch that. Sorry, maybe. Um, that. We, we, we basically are two revenue streams that we charge by. Uh, the first is consultation fees. We help them to plan Web3 project and all the gas fee are included in the, uh, in the project fees. And then we have a system licensing fee, which will be charged by yearly. And it's, it's around, it really depends on what modules they are using. Uh, on the platform. So these are the two uh, consultancy and uh, system license. 
So it's so a one-off and, and essentially a recurring fee based on how long they work with you. Yes, yes, exactly. Got it. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. All right, next question. We have uh, 40 seconds more. Arash? Hi, um, very well spoken, which is very important as some of the founders overlook that if they're not confident, investors usually aren't. Over to my question. In regulated markets, especially such as now the UAE is rolling out a lot of regulations around the stuff, have you looked into the NFT auditing space? Um, no, no, not yet at the moment. Could you, could you repeat bring one, you more, an one more time your, your questions? The NFT auditing so, space, sorry, what's happening? Sorry, time is up. Oh, time's up. Oh, well, thank, you, thank you yeah, so okay. much, Arash. Mm -hmm. Okay, right, so judges, you, please ask NFT your doomed. question very first. Okay, so next, thank you so much for your great pitch. Thank so you. next is, so we have two more startups, Xera Robotics. Please welcome Alexandra. Yeah. So hi, everyone. My name is Alex. I'm the CEO of Xera Robotics. We are a hardware and software company that makes tactile sensing technology in order to provide the human sense of touch robots. And our team has a lot of experience with tactile sensing hardware as well as tactile sensing software. And we started the company in August 2018 as a spin-off from Waseda University, which is one of the top universities in Tokyo. Why are we doing this? In many countries, including Japan, there is a labor shortage due to a rapidly aging society. And associated with that is a high cost of human labor. Therefore, companies are trying to fully automate their factories, warehouses, and agricultural activities to be more efficient and cost-effective. However, the reality remains that robots are still very clumsy and not yet ready for many tasks. We believe that there is a missing piece in the design of current robots. Most companies focus on visual data and smart AI, which are very important to locate an object. However, visual data is not enough to grasp, hold, and manipulate an object. Tactile data is required to solve this problem. We provide the human sense of touch to robots to solve this problem. We make this use in tactile sensors and they're available, they're available in various shapes and sizes. And each sensing point is very small, uh, as you can see here. And each sensing point can measure three axis forces. So not only the pressure, but also the shear forces, like a small joystick. The sensing points can be connected to uh, larger modules, as you can see here. And the modules can also be curved like a human fingertip. Other sensors, they're too big for the integration in robot skin. They're not durable. They're difficult to integrate because they need many additional wires and electronics. They don't provide distributed 3D sensing and they're too expensive. We not only provide the tactile sensors, but we also integrate the sensors in robot hands and grippers and we make the tactile AI. Here we integrated 368 three axis measurements in the robot hand. And uh, so there are more than a thousand measurements in total. And all the measurements are digital, which means that there are very few wires and the integration in the robot hand is feasible. We integrated a sensor, for example, also in this gripper. And here it's grasping a business card, which is very fragile. And it does that without deforming the business card. We are working on a tactile AI now. Um, for example, we can detect slip very fast. And when a slip happens, we can grasp the object a little bit harder to avoid the object from slipping out of the hand. And that works both for a gentle slip and also for major slip. We can detect if a grasp is good or bad, even before lifting the item. And when we detect an unstable grasp, this gives us time to re-grasp the object, find a better grasp, and then securely move the object to the final location. We can also detect, for example, if a tomato is ripe or unripe just by slightly squeezing it. We already have more than 50 customers all over the world. And yeah, we are Zero Robotics. Zero Robotics provides the human sense of touch to robots. Thank you so much for your great pitch. Judges, any questions? Okay, Peter, please. Yeah, um, I mean, um, my question is about your patents and this is basically a minefield. Uh, a lot of companies have a tactile uh, patents, including Immersion, Google, everybody. Uh, how do you navigate in that field? 
Um, so we have a, we have we have two patents. Uh, so our technology is patented. We also have a lot of experience. Like um, I, I mean, I've been working with Dr. Sensors for 15 years now. So I I can confidently say that our technology is better than a lot of the competition, and it's and it's patented. Any other questions? We have two okay. more minutes. Maybe maybe I can just continue. So sure. are you confident you can defend it against the other patents? Uh, yes, I, 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 I applied for a lot of patents, but only two of them we, we use for the company. Um, of, of course, I went through the other companies' patents as well. And the, the way our sensors work is, is quite different to other sensors. Um, okay. It, it and your patent is filed in which markets? Uh, uh, we filed them first in, in Japan, China, uh, US, and uh, in Europe is Germany, I think, yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Peter. Any other question? All right, no more questions. Thank you so much for your great pitch. Okay, so we have a last startup. Everyone, judges, wake up and uh, please keep voting. So let us welcome Lily Med Tech. Uh, please welcome Takashi san. Yeah, thank you. Can you show this slide? Yeah, yeah, we can see that. Okay, are you ready? Yeah. Okay, please start. Nice to meet you. Um, I'm Takashi Azuma, CTO of Lily Medic. We are developing a breast screening device using ultrasound. Breast cancer is the number one killer in women's cancer. In current screening method, uh, mammography, uh, there is a problem. Uh, in dense breast case, uh, both mammary gland and cancer in image white, then it is very difficult to find the cancer in this situation. And the half of women has uh, this type of breast. This situation is uh, very famous through patient social movement, are you dense? It's mo this movement made law in the United States and under the law, uh, doctor should inform the risk of missing cancer in the dense breast case, but no effective alternative method. This slide explains the several different imaging methods. This gray square shows a set of cancer and the blue one shows a finding in mammogram. Only half is detected and there are many false positives. In ultrasound, situation is similar. Only MRI can detect all cancer, but too expensive for screening. Our device, Kokori, is very unique because the patient position is the same in MRI. After clinical tryouts, uh, we developed a high accuracy annotation for AI using uh, both MRI and Kokori image. After that, its performance excess uh, that of Kokori with human doctor and also mammography or ultrasound. Our device has already get uh, Japanese medical regulatory approvals in last year. There are many advantages for all stakeholders, for patients, no radiation and no pain. For doctors, higher accuracy than that of mammography. And for hospitals, revenue improves by 200,000 because the uh, regular salary are replaced by AI. Major milestone is the IPO in 2026 for preparation to go to US market. Before that, we should get a regulatory approval for AI. And also in our plan, uh, we want to do clinical trial in Australia because uh, data acquisition for FDA and also a long time follow up. That is a very good in Australia. This is the final slide. Uh, this is our team and uh, KOLs. And uh, we have already obtained uh, 15 million US dollar funds so far. In current, uh, find raising target is $30 million. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your great pitch.
And uh, any questions from judges? Okay, Helen, please. Uh, Helen, you are muted. Okay, uh, thank you for your uh, wonderful introduction. I, I like your te technology very much. And I also know that um, at present, uh, few medical devices can fully uh, detect the breast cancer in, the, in early age stage. Um, just, just now I noticed that your, uh, your software and device um, have proved your efficacy and safety, um, but you will apply the uh, FDA regulation um, by 2026 and 27. So how many clinical studies do you still have to uh, conduct in the next years? Ah, yeah, currently uh, we have already did uh, 900 uh, clinical studies. And uh, in next, uh, we want to uh, Two or three hundred in Japan, and a similar level in also in Australia. We want. Okay, um, as we all know that if we want to develop something about AI, we need tons of uh, images uh, which uh, have been marked uh, with different signs. So mm -hmm. uh, during your next clinical studies, uh, uh, will you still need to collect um, mm -hmm. tons of images? So how much mm -hmm. about it? Yeah, uh, in our case, uh, we can get a volume image, then uh, in each uh, patients, 100 images is including, then a uh, thousand case means uh, 10, uh, sorry, 100,000 images. And also uh, we controlling the parameters only one, then the uh, required number of case is strongly reduced. Only uh, one situation, then uh, fluctuation is very controlled. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Helen. Okay, next question is from Peter. Yeah, uh, so we operate in Medtech. So 900 uh, trials means 900 patients or 900 trials? Ah, 900 patients. Then okay. uh, two breast is included. Okay, in how, many, how many patients for the FDA be, uh, to go and apply for FDA? Because three years from now, it's kind of a long time. And, and the second thing I want to ask about, is your hardware proprietary? You, you actually have to make the hardware or can you apply to any existing mammography or whatever hardware is it out there? Sorry, sorry, time's up. Thank you so much, Peter. And uh, thank you so much, uh, Little Med Tech. Okay, judges, thank please so vote. Uh, everyone, I need to vote as well. So we have uh, one minute for voting. And while we're waiting, maybe I can get my answer. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so overall, while we are waiting for one more minute uh, for judging and uh, so I, I'm asking uh, judges that today's if a feedback uh, Hampar, uh, what, what do you think about the uh, startups today? So let me go first, <laughs> John. Okay. Uh, the, startups, the startups are all very good. I'm happy to help them. And I sure. felt, you know, this, this is a very short three minute pitch. And then, you know, also very short time for questions. So, you know, here is my suggestion that um, please request or maybe pass my contact details to those, all those startups that pitch today. Uh, we are happy to help them, both in terms of getting them funding as well as go to market. Uh, so you know, you know the platforms that I co-founded and run all over the world, uh, happy to help them. So let this be something uh, that I can take it offline. Thank you. Yeah, so everyone can actually post your LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram, whatever, in the chat. And uh, please, you know, if you like to keep uh, communicating, feel free to contact each other. All right.
So uh, thank you, Bharat. And one more judge, uh, what do you think about the startup? Empire? Uh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> thanks, John Sam. So, uh, very interesting uh, and very competitive uh, uh, startups. So really wonderful to, uh, you know, uh, not only look into the ideas, but how it is being uh, implemented by the team there. And uh, as uh, as uh, Varad said, Krishna said, you know, uh, if you're looking forward for, you know, some of the go to market or, you know, even testing your. Uh, uh product or as uh, as lily metic just said you know if you are looking for more uh, you know uh, <clears throat> clinical trial to be done and uh, i guess it's very controlled one maybe you know it can be and also also for the field lab you know maybe we can explore the uh, the south asian market over here as well you know a very very interesting one yeah Thank you very right. yeah so uh, meanwhile, we I'm still waiting for the results from the our team. So, what do you think, uh, Helen, about today's uh, pitch competition? Um, I, I think it's very, very wonderful, especially about uh, uh, the TMT industry. And um, um, in my previous experiences, uh, the healthcare or uh, medicine technology is very advanced in Japan. Uh, but I have never uh, thought of the TMT uh, is also so advanced with such uh, with so many startups owners who are um, who are dedicated to it. All right, thank you so much, Karen. So now I have received uh, first to third prize from our management team. And uh, let me announce uh, today's winners. <laughs> Done. So third prize is Peel Lab. Please welcome again, Peel Lab, uh, Jim Hunt. Thank you so much. Congratulations. You so much. Such a pleasure. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Are you uh, going for a dinner now? <laughs> no, I was just at a cafe um, and then I got kicked out. So I'm just standing oh, really? outside of the cafe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm about to go home. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Good. Good. All right. Thank you. Sorry. Yep. So Thank you. Second, second prize. <laughs> Carbon Tribe. From Germany, I think. Okay, Yano. Yeah, hi. Thank you. Thank you for the prize. Congratulations. Uh, please uh, send us your message. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, thank you for the prize. And I, I will um, keep building. Thank you. Great. And uh, whenever you are planning to come back to Japan, let us know. We're going to have Yeah, of a... course. Of course, I'll be like uh, three times in a year uh, in Japan. Uh, so uh, we'll let you know then. Okay. Thank you. So mm -hmm. whenever you're coming back to Tokyo, uh, feel free to come to visit us, my office yeah. in Tokyo. And uh, of course. everyone, mm -hmm. all judges, uh, startups coming to Japan, please let me know. All right. So today's uh, first prize winner is Lily Medtech. Congratulations, Takashi. Hey, thank you. Thank you very much. You got the 4.4, and uh, it's the best uh, of the best. So please uh, give us your uh, feedback and comment. Yeah, uh, we are strongly confident uh, our device is uh, good for all stakeholders in breast screening on the breast cancer. I'm very happy uh, these are uh, good feedbacks and we go ahead uh, to improve our device and many patients can use uh, this device. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Takashi. And uh, thank you all judges today's uh, great contribution. And uh, we, we keep in touch on LinkedIn or whatever, uh, social media. And as I said, whenever you are uh, like to support Japanese startups and uh, for also startups, whenever you want to meet international uh, investors, feel free to message me anytime. I'm connected to both sides. All right, so today, uh, really appreciate once again, and please keep all your families, friends, stay safe.
healthy and happy and crazy. All right, my name is Crazy John from Tokyo. Thank you so much. Love is answer, everyone. See you guys. Bye. Bye, oh, John. Uh, no rap. Bye, bye. You all. bye, -bye Play your rap bye. in the end, man. All right. <laughs> no, next time. <laughs> Thank you.